What's up everybody, Pete the Hybrid Guy here, and today we have a very special treat for you on the channel. We are looking at the brand new version two Next Power lithium battery pack for your Toyota Prius Hybrid. I am very excited to get this one into my car. I've been running the prototype now for three years with no problems, and so the version two offers some incredibly good benefits. We're gonna take a look at those benefits today. Also, I'm gonna show you how to install one onto your existing battery tray, and then I'll tell you where you can get one for yourself. So hang on and let's get started. Before we dive in and actually get this battery into our vehicle, there's a few things that you need to know about why this battery is superior to anything else that you're gonna put in your vehicle. And number one, whenever I am looking at doing something to my vehicle, my first concern is my own personal safety. Now, Next Power has done a really good job with building a battery that is superior to nickel metal. Well, in what ways? Well, talking in terms of safety, the Next Power lithium battery is, if you can see here, has no vent tubes. The reason for that is, is this battery does not off gas like nickel metal does. Nickel metal off gases and the electrolyte leaves the battery and over time that really kills that battery. Uh, so the thing other... number two, performance. Uh, people ask me all the time, well how does the battery perform compared to nickel metal? Well, where you have a battery that has better energy density, that means your power curve is not just going to taper off um, really quickly if you're under heavy acceleration or when you're passing somebody or doing a hill climb those types of things. So with, better, with a better power packed battery, you're going to have consistent power throughout that power range when you're doing things like heavy acceleration, um, climbing a hill, those, you know, those types of things. That's really key. With that in mind, where you have a, a, a battery pack that's higher energy density, you have more EV drive time in optimal conditions. You know, when the weather's really good, where you're not running the heater a lot, um, is when the heater's on in the cars, it, kicks the car on to run the motor to put the coolant through there. Uh, so you definitely have that as well. Um, now with this battery right here, we have better internal uh, balancing. So we don't have the maintenance like we did in version one where we had to put the, uh, the harness on there to balance the battery modules. The version two uh, internal circuits help keep this battery in check. So performance wise, this thing stays in balance way easier. To get started, let's get all of our new version two blades unboxed so we can take a look and see how they're different from the version one. One of the very first things that I noticed on this new version two is the upper plate here. And a couple things to note about that. One is we have venting here to help with heat dissipation. And two, we have a new port for the temperature sensor. Now, previously on the earlier version, on version one, we had a temperature probe that stuck in on the side and only measured surface temperature. With the new version two, this actually goes down inside the battery to measure the core temperature. Now, one of the benefits that we're looking at right here is cold weather temperature performance uh, increase. So because of the new placement of the temperature probe, we're going to see an increased performance in this version two battery pack versus the version one. So if you have a version one and you're in a colder place, you really wanna consider upgrading to the version two because we'll get better fuel economy from the, just simply the placement and ventilation uh, of this version two battery. Now what we're gonna do here in this segment is I'm going to tear down this nickel pack, get rid of all the old modules out there and just get this uh, new lithium installed into my battery tray and get this thing ready to go into the car. One thing I almost forgot to mention is that we want to make sure we're checking the battery voltage before we put this new battery into its home. Uh, 
We want to go through and just check each module to make sure that they're all within about 0.1 volts of each other. And once this battery gets in there, you know, with a new version two, um, the new version two circuit that we have in here, it is going to balance itself, uh, which is wonderful. But we want to make sure that we don't have one module that's completely off the rails there. So I'm just going to go through, check all these modules, make sure that they're good to go, and then we'll start putting these in there. One thing I need to mention here, when you're checking the special blade for voltage, you need to make sure that you connect one of the ends with the bus bar. That way when you measure the other end, the whole battery circuit is connected and you can get an actual reading off of there. If not, there's no reading because there's no connectivity between this particular uh, terminal and then you won't know what's going on with that battery. One of these is supplied in every box, so if you've lost one, just pop one off the old battery and use it on there to make sure you test this module before it installs in the pack. Now once you've got your battery fairly stripped down, it's important to take a look at the bus bar nuts and the bus bars themselves. If they're corroded, you may want to consider getting new ones. Now the copper bus bars can clean up fairly easily. A wire brush uh, or putting them in a vinegar salt solution and cleaning them up will definitely go a long way and help us get proper power flow to and from our new lithium battery. Now, I've got a bunch of old janky stuff here, but I've got some better stuff sitting on my workbench that I'm going to use to reinstall this battery. I want to make sure that we're getting good, clean energy flow from our new power source into our car so we have the best possible outcome. When you're here at this point in the disassembly process, make sure on your high voltage connection side you know where to start. Now, it's pretty easy with these next power modules. They really only go one way, and your special blade is going to end up, well, about right here. Um, so just make note of where the terminals are, because you're going to be starting with a negative side here and ending up with a positive side down on this end. So if you got those reversed, that could be very bad. It would just destroy your battery right out of the gate. So make sure you're paying attention to where it starts and where it ends. I've got all the hardware out of the chassis at this point. So I'm gonna fight it and get it out and on the table. And then we can start installing our next power modules. I want to get some close-up footage of where on this Gen 2 Prius we're going to put the temperature probes. Now, Next Power has done a really good job at making everything as simple as possible. So if we zoom in here, we can actually see there's an opening here at the bottom with a clip here and then a clip right on the outside to put that temperature sensor on. So when we put these in, we got to make sure that we fit it the right way uh, to make sure we have a good contact for the temperature sensor to go right there and make sure we're getting adequate uh, battery temperature reading into the battery ECU. I'm now going to install the next cell battery modules into the case. I've removed the top bars just to make it simple. If there's something in your way, move it out of the way and give yourself enough room to really install these easy. Now, something that I do like that Next Power has done with the next cell modules 
is like on the OE, they have all of these little ribs that interconnect with each other and lock these into place. That helps them, you know, with thermal expansion um, and keeping them really nice and tight in the case. Uh, there's lots of other junk out there that you can get for cheaper, but it doesn't have the same quality of fit and finish that this next cell does. So I'm going to go ahead and just get these in there and button this thing up. In this point in the installation, I've hand thread on all of the nuts. Now, when you're putting these bus bars on, ensure that you're getting them in the right locations because if you cross any of these bus bars, it could show, show out a spark and it could scare you. Um, but you wanna make sure everything is started by hand. And then I recommend using a hand tool to go through and tighten these nuts so you don't over tighten them. They don't need a lot of torque on them. Uh, again, we're not trying to damage the terminals at all. We're just trying to get them good and snug so they're good and secure to give us a, a good connection. So we'll finish this up and uh, we're pretty close to getting this installed in the vehicle. Once you've got all the nuts secured into place, go ahead and put the proper caps back on. Make sure they're uh, <laughs> the right ones for the right side. And then uh, we can go ahead and get our case and everything back on and get this ready to go right into the vehicle. Now that I've got our battery all assembled, everything is ready to go in. So I'm gonna go ahead and get everything out of the way and let's get this new battery in and see how it performs. Okay, everything is in and assembled. Let's do a preliminary startup. And yes, I do need an oil change and we'll be doing that later. Battery's looking good. Motor's on. Fantastic. Engine kicks right on. No hesitancy whatsoever. Let's go for a quick test drive. 
Well, there you have it. We've got the new version 2 battery installed in the vehicle. I'm going to be doing some road testing, gathering some data, and then bringing you an update video on how the version 2 next power battery is performing in my vehicle. Before doing the swap, I was getting 43.5 miles to the gallon uh, with temperate weather, 40 pounds of pressure in my tires, and pretty much everything you know, fairly consistent with my drive patterns. I'm going to be doing the same drive patterns, collecting the same data, and ensuring that I'm getting everything as baseline as I possibly can to give you feedback. On my quick test drive, I did notice an increase in performance, and I did notice I did notice a good EV drive time. But again, I need to let I need to have time to let the battery balance itself, have the car learn everything about the new battery, and then I can give you some more accurate details. If you haven't yet, please like and subscribe to the channel so I can keep bringing you awesome content, and see you later.